with the Philippine College of Physicians well on the road to 70. The pre-convention series continues to pave the way for its 53rd Annual Congress. Following the Nutrition Summit on January 31, 2023, up next is the second Internal Medicine Bootcamp. Must Know Hacks High-Yield Advice on Clinical Knowledge and Skills This two-day bootcamp is slated on February 24 and 25 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Day 1 is a plenary session to be mounted in a hybrid format and welcomes all residents. Whether you're at the venue or on the virtual platform, you will have the opportunity to learn from the experts on relevant topics in rheumatology, dermatology, pulmonology, hematology, infectious disease, and hepatology. Day 2 brings you parallel sessions to be held on-site at the PICC and is open to senior residents only. Both Tracks A and B offer various workshops. Travel the road to 70 with the Philippine College of Physicians. Join the second internal medicine bootcamp. Must know hacks, high yield advice on clinical knowledge and skills. Know the tips and pearls and mark your calendars on February 24 and 25, 2023. The Philippine College of Physicians is unstoppable, implying the road to 70, taking you closer to its 53rd Annual Congress, month after month on the third leg of its pre-convention series of activities. The PCP invites you to take part in the Universal Healthcare Summit, Understanding Strategies, Aligning Perspectives, on March 25, 2023, at the Philippine International Convention Center. The country's finest internists are called to join forces in driving the importance of universal healthcare by gaining more knowledge and insights on its implications in the practice of internal medicine, real-world experience in the local setting, the internist role as a UHC healthcare provider, financial structures and obligations of various Philippine government groups, and the challenges behind UHC. The road to 70 is just around the corner. Be there for the Universal Healthcare Summit to advance your understanding of strategies and align with current perspectives. See you on March 25, 2023. Internists occupy a unique role in healthcare. They are experts in a spectrum of diseases and complex illness earning the moniker, the doctor's doctor. Internists use their vast knowledge, experience, and skill to identify the best possible treatment strategies, making them scientific puzzle solvers. They are proponents of extensive clinical research, evidence-based medicine, and continuing education. Fueled by the commitment to provide high-value patient care that balances science and compassion. In 2023, the Philippine College of Physicians celebrates 70 years of excellence and service above gain. Driven by passion, constancy of purpose, and prudence in internal medicine, Take part in the 53rd Annual Congress of the Philippine College of Physicians on May 7 to 10, 2023 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Together, let's revisit all that we've become and move toward all that we can be.
with the Philippine College of Physicians well on the road to 70. The pre-convention series continues to pave the way for its 53rd annual Congress. Following the Nutrition Summit on January 31, 2023, up next is the second Internal Medicine Bootcamp. Must Know Hacks High Yield Advice on Clinical Knowledge and Skills This two-day bootcamp is slated on February 24 and 25 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Day 1 is a plenary session to be mounted in a hybrid format and welcomes all residents. Whether you're at the venue or on the virtual platform, you will have the opportunity to learn from the experts on relevant topics in rheumatology, dermatology, pulmonology, hematology, infectious disease, and hepatology. Day 2 brings you parallel sessions to be held on-site at the PICC and is open to senior residents only. Both Tracks A and B offer various workshops. Travel the road to 70 with the Philippine College of Physicians. Join the second internal medicine bootcamp. Must know hacks, high yield advice on clinical knowledge and skills. Know the tips and pearls and mark your calendars on February 24 and 25, 2023. The Philippine College of Physicians is unstoppable in plying the road to 70, taking you closer to its 53rd Annual Congress, month after month. On the third leg of its pre-convention series of activities, the PCP invites you to take part in the Universal Healthcare Summit, Understanding Strategies, Aligning Perspectives, on March 25, 2023, at the Philippine International Convention Center. The country's finest internists are called to join forces in driving the importance of universal healthcare by gaining more knowledge and insights on its implications in the practice of internal medicine. Real-world experience in the local setting, the internist role as a UHC healthcare provider, financial structures and obligations of various Philippine government groups, and the challenges behind UHC. The road to 70 is just around the corner. Be there for the Universal Healthcare Summit to advance your understanding of strategies and align with current perspectives. See you on March 25, 2023. Internists occupy a unique role in healthcare. They are experts in a spectrum of diseases and complex illness earning the moniker the doctor's doctor internists use their vast knowledge experience and skill to identify the best possible treatment strategies making them scientific puzzle solvers they are proponents of extensive clinical research evidence-based medicine and continuing education fueled by the commitment to provide high-value patient care that balances science and compassion. In 2023, the Philippine College of Physicians celebrates 70 years of excellence and service above gain. Driven by passion, constancy of purpose, and prudence in internal medicine, Take part in the 53rd Annual Congress of the Philippine College of Physicians on May 7 to 10, 2023 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Together, let's revisit all that we've become and move toward all that we can be. With the Philippine College of Physicians well on the road to 70, 
the pre-convention series continues to pave the way for its 53rd annual congress. Following the Nutrition Summit on January 31, 2023, up next is the second internal medicine bootcamp. Must know hacks, high yield advice on clinical knowledge and skills. This two-day bootcamp is slated on February 24 and 25 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Day one is a plenary session to be mounted in a hybrid format and welcomes all residents. Whether you're at the venue or on the virtual platform, you will have the opportunity to learn from the experts on relevant topics in rheumatology, dermatology, pulmonology, hematology, infectious disease, and hepatology. Day 2 brings you parallel sessions to be held on-site at the PICC and is open to senior residents only. Both Tracks A and B offer various workshops. Travel the road to 70 with the Philippine College of Physicians. Join the second internal medicine bootcamp. Must know hacks. High yield advice on clinical knowledge and skills. Know the tips and pearls and mark your calendars on February 24 and 25, 2023. The Philippine College of Physicians is unstoppable, implying the road to 70, taking you closer to its 53rd Annual Congress, month after month, on the third leg of its pre-convention series of activities. The PCP invites you to take part in the Universal Healthcare Summit, Understanding Strategies, Aligning Perspectives, on March 25, 2023, at the Philippine International Convention Center, the country's finest internists are called to join forces in driving the importance of universal healthcare by gaining more knowledge and insights on its implications in the practice of internal medicine, real-world experience in the local setting, the internist role as a UHC healthcare provider, financial structures and obligations of various Philippine government groups and the challenges behind UHC. The road to 70 is just around the corner. Be there for the Universal Healthcare Summit to advance your understanding of strategies and align with current perspectives. See you on March 25, 2023. Internists occupy a unique role in healthcare. They are experts in a spectrum of diseases and complex illness, earning the moniker, the doctor's doctor. Internists use their vast knowledge, experience, and skill to identify the best possible treatment strategies, making them scientific puzzle solvers. They are proponents of extensive clinical research, evidence-based medicine, and continuing education. Fueled by the commitment to provide high-value patient care that balances science and compassion. In 2023, the Philippine College of Physicians celebrates 70 years of excellence and service above gain. Driven by passion, constancy of purpose and prudence in internal medicine. Take part in the 53rd Annual Congress of the Philippine College of Physicians on May 7 to 10, 2023 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Together, let's revisit all that we've become and move toward all that we can be.
Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of our Lord. Our dearest Heavenly Father, thank you for making all things possible. We are grateful for all the blessings you are pouring upon each one of us, despite the challenges we are all currently facing. Thank you for blessing us today with the wonderful opportunity to meet virtually and learn together in the awesomely exciting webinar. May your blessings of wisdom and guidance be upon us, all through the sharing and impartation of knowledge and skills by our resource speakers, facilitators, and moderators. May all of us learn together, upgrade our competencies, and capacitate us to be the help in the development of our learners' lives and communities in the spirit of your love and generosity. May we now humbly commit every part of this webinar to you, as we all bring you the glory, honor, and praises for your kingdom and holy name's sake. All this we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Philippine College of Physicians, through the Committee on Media Communication and Health Forum, presents its bi-monthly lay forum to promote the advocacies and mission of the college and its component and affiliate societies. An avenue of accurate and up-to-date conversations with the media and the general public. With timely and diverse topics, covering vital public health and medical information straight from the experts in a platform that is convenient accessible and highly engaging welcome to the PCP Health Forum sa inyong lahat. I am Doc Kat and welcome to our PCE Health Forum. Welcome sa lahat sa mga fellow PCE my fellow medical and healthcare workers very supportive and viewers that are viewing this through either our Zoom platform our other social media platforms through YouTube and Facebook Live. Magandang umaga and welcome to this health forum. So, ang topic natin for today is very timely. 
uh, for sure, during mga Noche Buena natin and New Year celebration, we've gained a lot of weight due to the celebrations and very good food. And for this upcoming month in March, we are also celebrating um, the World Obesity Day, which is on March 4. So our topic for this week's Health Forum is entitled, Let's Talk About Obesity, Changing Perspectives. Thank you all for joining today. I am again, Dr. Katuhino, and I will be your moderator for today's session. So, ano po ba, ba talaga ang obesity? So, according to the World Health Organization, obesity is defined as the excessive accumulation of fat that becomes a health risk for an individual. So, also according to the global global burden of disease, over 4 million people die each year because of obesity or just being overweight. And because of this, the rate just increases in adults and in even in children. What is alarming is that initially, ito ay just a problem for high-income um, countries such as the United States. But now, due to the increase in urban settings, of low to middle income countries such as the Philippines, this has led to increasing healthcare costs, lost productivity, and adverse family, social, and economic outcomes. So our goal for today's talk is to know about obesity and its changing perspectives. So to give us a proper welcome message for today's health forum, May I now introduce the incumbent treasurer of the Philippine College of Physicians, Dr. Nemencio Nicodemus Jr. Good morning. Uh, magandang umaga, Dr. Tohino, at maganda umaga sa lahat po nakikinig ng ating PCP Health Forum. Gaya po nang nabanggit kanina sa introduction, ang PCP Health Forum ay naglalayon na bigyang kaalaman ang ating mga kababayan tungkol sa mga importanteng karamdaman na ating kinakaharap sa ating bansa. At isang nga pong napaka-interesanteng karamdaman ay ang obesity o yung sobrang katabaan. As mentioned by Dr. Tohino, it is a problem not just by the affluent countries, but also of third world countries. And the Philippines is no exception to that. The latest Food and Nutrition Research Institute survey was able to estimate that 36.6% of Filipino adults aged 20 years old and above have either overweight or obesity. And quite interestingly, when they looked at the data, women outweigh men. 42% of Filipino women aged 20 to 55 are either overweight or obese compared to 32.9% of Filipino men. 43% of people in the urban areas have overweight and obesity compared to 33.6% in the rural areas. And as mentioned by Dr. Tohino, it is also associated with being rich or affluent. And in fact, uh, when they analyze the data here in our country, 51% of the richest uh, uh, percentage of the population surveyed are the ones obese compared to just 23% in the poorest area. But this morning, tayo po ay matututo ng mas marami pa tungkol sa obesity galing sa ating pong expert na magdi-discuss ng topic na to. And so I enjoin everyone to listen to our expert and learn and later on, if you do have questions, please feel free to ask them from our dear speaker. Thank you very much, and let us enjoy our learning this morning during our PCP Health Forum. Thank you, Dr. Nicodemus, for being with us and for graciously opening our health forum and giving us a background on what is the facts and data about obesity. So before we start our session proper, may I all remind everyone of the rules and etiquettes for this webinar and health forum. So if we have any questions, uh, we, may, we may type or write our questions in the Q&A chat box or the comment sections in YouTube or Facebook Live. So that later Later on in the Q&A portion, we can answer, our resource uh, expert speaker can answer their, your questions. So um, 
why do we need to know about obesity? So, because obesity nga, no, is a significant burden of disease and it also increases our risk to develop some common health problems uh, such as our cardiovascular diseases, such as stroke, diabetes, other musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal and degenerative diseases such as arthritis, and even cancer. Hence, ang concern natin for this condition. So, to further enlighten us more on obesity and its changing perspectives, may I now introduce our distinguished resource speaker from the Philippine College of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism. He is Dr. Gerald Bermudez. He is a doctor of medicine from the Far Eastern University, Dr. Nicanorius Medical Foundation. He also had his internal medicine residency at FEU. He had his fellowship. For, uh, for endocrinology at the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital. He is also a diplomat and fellow of the Philippine College of Physicians and Philippine College of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism. He is a member of the Nutrition and Obesity Council of the PCEDM and, assistant, and an assistant professor of FEU uh, Institute of Medicine. He is also an active consultant of the FEU Medical Center, Philippine Heart Center, Dr. Jose Rodriguez Memorial Hospital and Sanitarium, Bernardino General Hospital, and Abra Medical and Diagnostic Center. Let us all give a warm welcome to Dr. Gerald Bermudez, our resource expert speaker for today's session. Welcome, Dr. Jed. Thank you, Dr. Kat, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, again, uh, before I start my talk, um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Philippine College of Physicians for inviting us over, um, being a representative of the Nutrition and Obesity Council of the Philippine College of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism. Again, good morning to everyone. I'll just open my slides. Okay, good morning, everyone, again. Well, just like uh, what Dr. Katz has mentioned earlier, no? um, ang topic natin ay very timely, especially that we have just no, finished the, the parties during Christmas and because of the, the long lockdown that we have experienced during our pandemic. And uh, especially also that we will be celebrating the World Obesity Day on March 4. So next month, on. And actually, this talk is based on the theme of our obesity, uh, World Obesity Day, which is let's talk about obesity changing perspective. Ano nga ba ito? No? Actually, it's, it's really time for us to change our perspective. Perspective on obesity. It's not just looking about our patient. Na malaki sila, no. Um, we have to uh, to to stop our great discrimination and stigma out, uh, about obesity, and we have to look into the deeper root cause of obesity. Na, na ang obesity ay madaming pinanggagalingan, na madaming maaring dulot na komplikasyon. And so we have to act on this one, and we have to address the issues on obesity. Okay, to begin with, no, sabi nga ni Dr. Nicodemus kanina, tsaka ni Dr. Katz, no, uh, obesity is no longer just a disease of rich countries. So, luma na yon, no? But again, certain studies have mentioned that tumataas na even sa mga uh, countries na uh, vulnerable or poor communities because of, of course, no, nakikita natin ang problem natin, common ng access to health and even yung mga um, foods na Poor, uh, poor nutritious food and high-dense food. So makikita natin kung ano yung mga pinagmumula nito later on. And having said that, because of the increasing prevalence of obesity, we have seen no, na tumataas din ang mga tao nagkakaroon ng sakit nito. And you can see here that it really affects no, 1 in 6 adults and 1 in 11 children worldwide. That is the data in 2020. Then it's been 3 years na, so I think that that is also increasing. And we know for a fact that obesity really is really linked to a range of adverse physical and mental health outcomes. No, Unfortunately, especially those far-flung areas, 
itong mga pasyente na ito who are affected by obesity have their own struggle, especially with accessing to healthcare um, support system. And and we know, no, nakikita natin, this patient really no, face harmful stigma. And we have to change this uh, current circumstance. Now, um, sabi nga ni Kat kanina, no, tumataas ang mga uh, pasyente nagkakaroon nito. And uh, makikita natin no, na more than 800 million adults worldwide are currently obese, no? approaching to 1 billion. In the Philippines, we it has been estimated that 27 million Filipinos are already obese, no? uh, almost one-fourth of the population. And uh, by 2030, it is expected na tataas pa yung numerong ito. It will be estimated that there will be 1 billion people globally to be suffering from obesity if we do not act as early as now. Now, uh, ano nga ba ang obesity? No? Gaya nga ng sinabi ni Kat kanina nung una, no? ang obesity ay isang kondisyon. No? It's a condition of abnormal or excessive fat accumulation in the adipose tissue to the extent that uh, the health may be impaired. No, usually, makikita natin na this is a preventable disease. It is a treatable disease. No? Um, Traditionally, no, and even up to now, we actually use the body mass index to screen for obesity. And it is being defined as BMI of more than 30. And later on, makikita natin um, yung iba't ibang kategorya ng BMI. No? Uh, isang grupo sa America or the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists have further no, uh, expounded the term obesity. Actually, they have revised a term which is the adiposity based chronic condition which actually focuses no more on the characteristic pathophysiological effects of excess weight rather than the weight itself so ina address dito yung mga root causes of obesity and more and the complications of being obese especially cardiovascular outcomes okay makikita din natin na ang obesity ay nagdudulot ng maraming uh, problema no yung global global burden of obesity well, we know for a fact that untreated, if untreated, obesity would be responsible for a significant proportion of non-communicable disease, no? Gaya ng uh, sakit sa puso, no? Diabetes, sakit sa atay, and um, madami na ding pag-aaral na ang, diab- ang obesity is actually associated uh, for many types of cancer. No, nakakalungkot mang isipin no nung nung COVID uh, nung kasagsagan ng COVID-19 pandemic, no, mas madaming pasyente ang apektado, mas madaming pasyenteng namamatay yung mga mabibigat or yung mga obese patient. And this has been seen in several studies. And unfortunately, no, uh, there are a lot of patients, no, 2.8 million adults die each year as a result of being overweight or obese. And translating that, no, nababawasan ang longevity natin or life expectancy natin by approximately 12 to uh, 6 to 12 years by being overweight or obese. Um, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, no, I'm sure sa uh, sa most of us would be familiar with the BMI chart. Nakikita natin ito sa clinics or minsan sa mga posters, no, para makalkula natin kung ano nga ba ang BMI natin para masabi natin na normal ba ang ating uh, bigat o kaya underweight ba tayo, overweight ba tayo o kaya obese tayo. So usually yung yung body mass index which is a tool that we use for screening obesity, usually ginagamit natin yung timbang natin in kilograms at saka yung height natin. And based on the, the criteria no, ng uh, World Health Organization, we have our own criteria kasi dito sa Asia Pacific, um, ang normal na BMI, ibig sabihin, hindi tayo underweight, hindi tayo overweight. So usually nag-range yan sa 8.5 to 20.9. So ang pagiging obese, makikita natin no, na 20, if our BMI is 25 and above, then we will be categorized as obese. Okay. Having said that, no, kanina nabanggit ko yung global burden ng obesity, no? And even the life expectancy that it will decrease, no, associated with obesity. And this has been seen in several studies. Makikita natin, no, yung association ng body mass index and mortality ratio na habang pataas ang ating uh, timbang, pataas ng pataas ang ating uh, um body mass index no associated by higher outcomes of mortality okay 
kanina nabanggit ko din na ang obesity ay hindi lang yung uh, pagkain ng madami o kaya yung uh, hindi nag-exercise. But looking into that deeper sense, no, yun ang gusto natin maiparating sa, sa ating mga uh, partners, sa mga pasyente, na ang obesity ay madaming pinagmumulan dyan. No? Makikita natin, no, people who are obese, usually they are constantly shamed and blamed for their disease. But it's not their fault. No? Um, dahil because because madami pa rin tayo, madami pa rin sa ating mga kababayan no even including healthcare professionals and lawmakers would not understand that obesity is really a chronic disease so makikita natin no madaming pinagmumulan ng obesity nandiyan yung genetic makeup natin ng pagkain natin even our biology yung makeup ng ating Uh, katawan, access to healthcare, mental health issues, yung mga lifestyle events natin, and even the role of stigma and skip. No? Uh, tingnan natin isa-isa yung mga ito, bakit they are associated, they are linked to obesity. Bakit pinagmumulan ito ng pagiging obese? Nasabi natin, no, yung role ng biology, no? makikita natin no, yung ang katawan natin, the human body is actually has a built-in mechanism to protect ourselves from starvation. So yun ang ginagawa normally ng ating katawan, no? Um, normally yung katawan natin or fat cells natin gumagawa ng isang hormone known as leptin. Okay? Usually yung leptin na ito ay nagbibigay ng um, it will tell the body kung ilan ang fat accumulation na dapat uh, uh, gawin niya or accumulate niya. Ngayon kung bumababa ang fat cells natin, bumababa ang leptin natin, no? This will send interpretation to our brain. So, may interpret ito ng brain natin that it's a form of starvation. So, nagkakaroon, nag-adjust ang katawan natin, no, by uh, the sense of hunger, no, kumakain tayo. And this may this would also explain na minsan, no, ang hirap magpapayat because of this mechanism na meron tayo. Kasi when we lose fat cells, bumababa ang leptin natin, no, nai-interpret din ito ng ating uh, brain na kailangan nating kumain. Another uh, uh, root cause of obesity is actually, no, yung pagkain natin, no? Especially during the advent of uh, the pandemic where in, no, uh, order tayo ng order ng pagkain, yung mga uh, access natin with um, mga fast food, mga junk food, no? This actually is seen across the globe that is actually contributing to the rapid rise in obesity. Okay, especially yung mga significant increase ng mga processed foods which are available, calorie dense, nutrient poor, affordable and heavily promoted uh are heavily promoted, no? especially yung mga working class, no, yung busy tayo, no. We actually uh uh eat this, no, rather than preparing uh home cooked healthy foods. And sometimes, no, we are guilty of this one. And another is actually the role of gene. No, alam naman natin ito na that our genetic uh, makeup would actually somehow contribute to uh, the risk of obesity. No, obesity is actually 40 to 70 percent. But pag titignan natin, no, yung effect nito ay very minimal lang. However, if this is um, implicated or associated na sa mga kinakain natin, sa mga lifestyle natin, then the the role of genetic and lifestyle would actually uh, begin to increase our chances of being obese and eventually to the complications of obesity na tinatawag natin another issue here is actually no nakakalungkot mang isipin no yung healthcare access natin so madami pa rin tayong nakikita especially in our setting no yung mga pasyente natin na nandoon sa far flung areas in which they have uh, poor access to healthcare kung meron man no the affordability of healthcare facilities of healthcare um that's why no uh they do not uh they are not being advocated or educated with regards to the importance of um preventing this kind of disease okay so another no nabanggit ko kanina yung uh, importance ng food no another is yung food marketing no yung um Uh, which which actually cause no complex relationship with the system 
and half no so again no it this would comprise with um, different elements katulad ng mga food availability affordability and even marketing which actually promotes no uh, obesity in uh, certain types of populations um another issue here is also mental health no which is uh, very timely actually no um symptoms of some mental health Uh, disorders na no? nakikita natin no um they they eat less they are lethargic or sometimes kumakain sila ng kain so this is associated with obesity and uh, sometimes even the medications they are taking no antidepressants antipsychotic some of these medications would actually promote weight gain and we have to understand this one no or vice versa no because of the weight stigma weight discrimination some of these patients would uh, begin having mental issues and we have to address this issue as well okay another is another role another um root cause also is the role of obesity no may mga pag-aaral na ang lack of sleep okay or lagging puyat is actually associated with cardiovascular disease depression and obesity pagkakulang kasi daw ang ating uh, tulog when we have a uh, lack of sleep tumataas ang iba't ibang hormones natin na nakakapag Uh, increase ang chances natin na maging uh, lumaki. No? There is an increase in uh, cortisol, which is a stress hormone linked to weight gain. Tumataas din ang ghrelin, isang hormone that stimulates appetite and cravings. And nabanggit natin kanina yung role ng leptin sa katawan. Pagkapuyat tayo, bumababa ang leptin natin, which is a hormone that tells our brain when we are full. no? So, In return, no, pag tumataas ang cortisol, tumataas ang ghrelin natin, bumababa ang leptin natin, um, it can actually make us no, crave more. No? Nagkikrave tayo ng sugary, fatty, and salty foods. And therefore, we eat more, contributing our chances to become uh, obese. Okay. And lastly is uh, weight discrimination and stigma. which actually can have very significant consequence uh, on somebody with uh, obesity. Okay? So, yung obesity uh, stigma, no? nakikita natin that it can actually um, have a very uh, um, very high social impact uh, as well as economic consequences for individuals who are living with obesity no example no fewer ang opportunities for education or sometimes even employment no makikita natin may certain requirements pag nag apply tayo ng uh, trabaho minsan no mas mababa ang chance chance ng mga pasyenteng ubis na matanggap sa isang trabaho because of these requirements or standard na uh, nakikita natin when we do apply for certain jobs no having said that no na discuss natin yung mga root cause of obesity So we have uh, knowing this root cause of obesity and therefore we have also to be aware no of the complications of obesity. Ang pagiging mataba hindi lang po diabetes, diabetes o kaya high blood ang magiging consequence niya. As we can see here, madami po no multi-systemic ang komplikasyon ng diabetes no. Pwede tayong magkaroon ng earlier dementia no, andiyan na stroke, sakit sa puso. Meron dang sakit sa baga, ang asthma, o kayo yung obstructive sleep apnea na tinatawag. It would also cause no, liver disease, mga fatty liver disease, which eventually can turn, will lead into more severe cases of liver cirrhosis and unfortunately, mga liver cancer. Now, aside from liver cancer, madami na ding mga Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, no? different types of cancers are associated with obesity. Makikita natin no? yung colon cancer, breast cancer, no? renal cancer, and even endometrial cancer. Aside from that, no? mapapansin natin, o kaya mga kaibigan natin, di ba? sinasabi na um, hindi sila uh, nagkakaanak dahil mabigat sila. Which is actually true. There is really an association of obesity to infertility no? in even Mabuntis man nagkakaroon ng miscarriage because of the association of obesity and pregnancy loss. No? Pag mas mabigat tayo, no? so masakit ang ating mga buto. No? We develop arthritis and even gout. So these are the, the things or complications that we can expect 
when somebody is uh, being obese. And if we actually act early, if we address our issues on obesity, makikita naman natin na it actually would decrease the chances of the complications na binanggit natin earlier. No? Bababa ang chance natin magkaroon ng sakit sa puso, magbababa ang chance natin magkaroon ng diabetes, depression, stroke, arthritis, and no, some women would have improved fertility. At uh, nakita na ito sa mga uh, pag-aaral. No? Several studies have shown that really if we address these issues, then uh, all of these complications will have a significant improvement in even the quality of life of patient who is uh, obese. Okay? So paano nga ba natin uh, ginagamot? Paano natin uh, ina-address ang um, mga pasyenteng my obesity sa Pilipinas. So actually, we have uh, the obesity treatment recommendation in the Philippines, which is actually uh, which is actually advocated, no, sa Philippine Association for the Study of Overweight and Obesity. Of course, no, sa pag ang pasyente ay isang ay mataba o kaya malaki, no, kailangan muna nating i rule out o kaya alamin kung meron bang ibang problema ang pasyente. Karaniwan, no, tinitignan natin kung hypothyroid nga ba ang pasyente o kaya meron ibang mga hormonal imbalance such as mga Cushing's disease na that would explain na lumalaki ang pasyente. Kasi kahit ilang uh, 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 lifestyle intervention ang i-advise natin sa pasyente kung merong underlying problem, no, sometimes it will disappoint us or the treatment would be frustrating. So, for example, kung hypothyroid ang patient, then we have to address the thyroid problem para at least, no, uh, ma-address natin eventually din yung uh, cost ng obesity na obesity ng isang pasyente who is hypothyroid. Now, aside from working up this patient for other causes of obesity, we have also to evaluate, no? Tinitignan natin yung mga comorbid conditions ang mga ang pasyenteng ito kung meron na. We have to check on the risk factors of this patient. Kasi aside from addressing the obesity, the weight concern of this patient, kailangan din natin bigyang pansin ang mga comorbid condition ng patient. For example, malaki yung patient natin. No? Kung meron ng diabetes ang pasyente, meron ng high blood ang pasyente, kailangan din natin uh, bigyang pansin o kaya gamutin ang mga sakit na ito. Okay, so we also have to prepare, of course, our patient for weight management. No, it is individualized depending on the need of our patient by actually stratifying this patient. Kunwari, is it um, low risk ba itong pasyente na ito na magkaroon ng cardiovascular uh, outcomes, uh, normal risk, high risk, or severely high risk of developing cardiovascular outcome. Because in that sense, makikita natin kung ano ang kailangan natin ibigay sa pasyente natin. No? Ito yung risk na sinasabi natin para mak- uh, aside from advising no, yung lifestyle intervention para din ma- malaman natin kung bibigyan na ba natin ng pharmacotherapy or uh, drugs ang pasyente natin obese or or if not, no, baka kailangan na rin natin i-advise ang metabolic surgery or yung commonly na sinasabi natin bariatric surgery sa mga pasyente, especially kung uh, morbid obesity or especially kung meron ng morbid obesity ang patient at saka uh, obesity-related diseases. Now, uh, gaya na nang banggit ko kanina, no, on top of the medications, pharmacotherapy, and even surgery, no, we always advocate lifestyle intervention sa mga pasyente natin. Lahat ng pasyente natin would be, we have to advise them on proper eating, the diet that they have to do to eat, no, and even the exercise. Now, this is actually taken from the the Philippine no association uh, association association for the study of overweight and obesity kasi yung pagkain natin no it's actually individualized kada bansa hindi naman pare-parehas ang pagkain natin so sa Pilipinas ganito ang design ng ating pagkain but again the bottom line is even that we are a rice eating uh, country we have to take those in moderation no again no more on the vegetables uh, fruits and less of the sugary food the fatty food no and what is more important actually when we uh, advise our patient no mas madali nilang maintindihan yung pinggang pinoy na tinatawag natin actually no mas nakikita natin sa mga pasyenteng diabetes ito but actually we can also advise this patient ng mga pasyenteng obese na may mga uh, expected complication na so this is how we uh, 
we advise our patient paano natin sinasabihin kung paano ang o kung ano ang itsura ng plato nila no so usually this is a 9 inch plate no hindi yung norm hindi yung malalaking plato natin sa bahay kasi it's actually 12 inches yung karaniwang plato natin sa bahay so this is a 9 inch plate no makikita natin it's actually properly distributed distributed no uh, uh, distribution ng carbohydrates ng vegetables fruits and protein because again we have to balance everything so we can still eat yung mga paborito natin but again what is important is everything has to be taken in moderation aside from uh, healthy eating no and doon din yung role syempre ng exercise no this is actually the filipino pyramid activity guide but actually when we talk of exercise we actually tell our patients no to do yung mga moderate intensity uh, exercise no so and paano nga ba ginagawa ito gaano ba katagal ano ba yung duration niya in a one week no for example yung mga moderate uh, intensity exercise like for example mga brisk walking no so usually we advise patient to have at least 150 minutes per week or let's say pwede namang hati-hatiin yun kada araw let's say 30 minutes every other day para makuha yung 150 minutes per week or sometimes may mga patient din na gusto nila yung um Uh, um, high intensity training or exercise just like yung mga basketball, swimming. So we can also advise this patient as long as the patient has no contraindications uh, to uh, do high intensity training. No, Usually, we advise this patient to have this uh, exercise 75 minutes a week. No, Mas mababa compared sa moderate intensity exercise. Now, uh, this is actually a good uh, uh, example of a comprehensive behavioral behavioral weight loss intervention to achieve a 7% to 10% weight loss. Nandito na yung mga uh, overall no from the start of uh, lifestyle intervention through proper diet, exercise, as well as a monitoring of our patient. No? Uh, Going back kanina no yung algorithm natin for the treatment of obesity no paano nga ba natin i-monitor ang patient natin at paano natin masasabi na successful nga ba yung weight management plan na binibigay natin sa mga patient usually we follow up this patient at least three to six months later no if uh, if this patient has uh, loss no uh, 5 to 10% of the initial uh, weight then that would Uh, become successful. So kailangan din nating i-follow up ang mga patient, ang mga patient natin. And so, uh, ano nga ba dapat nating gawin to fight obesity? It's actually more than diet and exercise. We have to educate, advocate, and attack the roots. Yung mga diniskas natin na maaring pagmula ng obesity. Okay, so attacking the roots, kanina nabanggit na natin yung recognition of obesity, obesity monitoring, no? obesity prevention, of course, yung treatment kanina. And what is more important is actually yung system-based approach. No? Dito na pumapasok yung um, role ng education by inculcating to our students no? as early as uh, elementary days pa lang. No? We discussed the health benefits of being healthy, no? avoiding obesity. Nandito na rin yung... Uh, role ng government policy makers para at least no yung advoc- uh, advocacy natin to fighting obesity would be enhanced so hindi lang sa ating uh, part as physicians as healthcare professionals so kailangan natin ng holistic multidisciplinary approach uh, to fight obesity and just to wrap up everything no uh, let's see some myths and facts about obesity no kanina nabanggit natin na obesity is a lifestyle choice and not A dis- uh, and not a disease. No, it's actually false. So what is true is that obesity is a disease that has multiple biological, genetic, and environmental causes. Na na discuss naman natin kanina. Another is na na nakikita natin dati na na some of us would believe is a large amount of weight reduction is required for health benefits, which is actually totally wrong. No, Many health benefits can actually be achieved with as little as 2.5% of weight loss. No, Makikita natin, nag-exercise na, sabi ng patient, bakit hindi naman po ako pumapayat? It's actually more than that. No, By having weight loss of as little as 2.5% nagsisimula ng mag-improve ang cardiovascular complications ng isang obese na pasyente. 
another myth that we encounter is that obesity is solely due to eating too much, which is actually uh, wrong. No, uh, The effect of food on weight depends on the caloric uh, density, quality, and quantity of food. And therefore, dapat po tayong mapanuri sa mga kinakain natin. And another is that special diets are the best way to reduce fat. Again, uh, there is no single diet uh, which becomes appropriate for everyone. So individualized siya. No? A helpful dietary pattern is more important than any single diet. No? Ang dami natin naririnig ng mga diet. So carbohydrate diet, no? ketogenic, intermittent fasting, actually depending on the patient characteristic and what is uh, uh, more appropriate to the patient, yun ang follow natin. No? Uh, rather than sticking to that specific diet na it will be more harmful than beneficial, then we just follow what is uh, the way that we understand yung healthful dietary pattern, yung, yung pinakita natin kanina, or even the simple uh, pinggan Pinoy, no? pwede rin yun. And lastly, no, medication and surgery for obesity is considered cheating, which is actually wrong, no? The disease of obesity is no different from other chronic metabolic diseases that require medical and surgical treatment. May kanya-kanya pong indikasyon. Hindi lang sa pag hindi lang sa exercise. Kung mas uh, meron ng harmful effect or may mga obesity-related diseases na baka kailangan ng magbigay ng uh, pharmacotherapy o kaya i-offer na ang surgery or metabolic surgery sa mga pasyente obese. And therefore, no, with the theme of the World Obesity Day this year, 20 to 20, uh, 2023, we have talked about obesity and I hope we have changed our perspective uh, to our patients who are obese by looking into the roots of obesity, understanding the mechanism, and uh, looking in the complications, what we what we can do more about um, this uh, uh, issue of chronic disease. And sabi nga sa theme ng World Obesity Day ng 2022, no, by changing our perspective, perspective, no, everybody needs to act, no, hindi lang sa sa perspective natin, but kailangan din natin isagawa yung mga advokasya natin to fight against obesity. And again, no, just like the theme in 2021, to, to, to do this one, everybody needs everybody. So kailangan natin uh, lahat. Just like yung sinabi ko kanina, systems-based approach is a holistic and multi, multidisciplinary approach. No? Kailangan natin ang uh, tulong ng not only the healthcare professionals, the role of education, and also the government for us to stop obesity and to end the weight stigma. And uh, I think that is my uh, last slide unless we have questions. Um, thank you for listening. Okay. So, Doc Jed, thank you so much for your very comprehensive and very informative discussion on obesity. I've learned a lot, especially, di ba, may stigma minsan on saying a patient is obese. So, another name pala is the ad- adiposity-based chronic disease or ABCD, at least uh, to lessen the stigma. The on stigma, being obese. yes. Yes. yes okay. so for anyone who has, there are already questions actually though in the chat box, but for everyone who uh, wants to learn more about uh, or have questions about obesity, you can type your questions in the Q&A chat box or mismong yung chat box uh, sa Zoom. So Doc, let's, Doc Jet, let's start the ball rolling with the questions kasi medyo marami. So Doc, this is from me actually. Um, uh, there have been many, kasi doc, diba, there have been many popular diets, yung mga ketogenic diets, uh, water fasting, nakikita niyo yung mga celebrities that have drastic weight loss. For obese people, is it um, safe to undergo yung mga ketogenic diet, yung mga water fasting, yung mga ganun doc? 
Yeah, actually it's a fad no yung ano natin, no? Naging gusto 'yan yung mga ketogenic, intermittent fasting, yung mga one meal day, uh, one meal a day diet o mat, no? Uh, when it comes to obesity alone, no? Certain studies have mentioned na meron naman talagang weight loss as much as um as much as on average ng uh, 5 to 10% no sa mga certain studies no but again uh, in patients na meron obesity related disease may mga cardiovascular complications well we have to be cautious for this one kasi when we look at the data no sa mga pag-aaral wala pang mga long term uh, na studies no na tinip na nila yung cardiovascular mortality ng mga pasyenteng ito undergoing ketogenic and intermittent fasting. So, very small kasi yung population, very small yung study. So, siguro in the long run, no, kasa, siguro maganda rin natin tignan, no, observe natin yung mga pasyente ito in the long run para makita natin kung meron bang effect ito more on the cardiovascular aspect, not only on we, uh, not only on losing weight. Pag weight loss, yes, meron meron tayong nakikitang benefit, but again, we have to look into the more um, complicated aspects such as cardiovascular outcomes of these um, certain diets na uh, tinatawag natin. So doc, we really have to consult our doctor before going into those diets. Oo, kasi minsan may mga patient talaga no na nag-start ka na. Gusto lang, no? One day, gumising, gusto mag-ketogenic diet o kaya uh, mag-interpreted uh, fasting. Minsan, makikita mo nila sa, sa emergency room, nagpa-palpitate, hypoglycemia, bumabagsak ang ang sugar, no? So, even me, no? Pagka-busy, no? Minsan, as for us doctors, no? Minsan, parang nag intermittent fasting tayo, di ba? Para uh, kakain na tayo pag, pagkatapos ng clinics, alas 12. Or minsan, parang nag go once, uh, uh, once, one meal a day tayo. And sometimes at the end of the day, no, mararamdaman natin yung effect. Like, nahihilo na, mainit na ang ulo, no? So, these are the things that we have to consider. And therefore, yes, I would agree, Dr. Akat, na we have to consult our doctors if this uh, certain diet is actually appropriate sa atin. Kasi, may binabagayan. Hindi lahat pwede. Yes, Doc. So, individualize and get from your doctor if it's the right diet for you. So, Doc, from our viewers sa Zoom, from Ma'am Florita Garcia, um, is menopause, is being menopausal, um, it, does it contri- contribute to women's obesity? Yes, actually, no. Uh, because again, with the interplay of hormones, again, no. Uh, kaya mapapansin natin, no. Pagka when we reach the age of menopause, no, so nagiging mas malaki tayo, and sometimes uh, we tend to uh, we tend to lose weight the harder way when we have menopause. Uh, that's it. Yes, uh, it is associated with uh, obesity as well because of again, no, interplay ng hormones natin. Okay, Doc. So, hormones plus yun nga, yung being menopausal. So, um, in the Q&A chat box, Doc, we have a question from an anonymous attendee, Doc Jed. So, ang question is, aside from Orlistat, are there other medications recommended for obesity treatment in Philippine guidelines? Can GP and internists prescribe this or is it recommended that the patient consult with endocrinologists and what are the contraindications? Thank you. Yun, Doc. So actually, no, pagka binabasa natin yung libro natin, even in the Prince Society guidelines, no, there are a lot of medications which are approved for obesity. But unfortunately, no, uh, sa Philippine guidelines, even yung uh, uh, yung um, what do you call that, yung uh, availability natin sa Pilipinas, hindi lahat doon. We have uh, seen no, yung uh, sa endocrine society, yung like mga pentermil or caserin. However, hindi siya available. no. And what is available is yes, yung I would agree, yung or listat na uh, sinabi ng ating uh, viewer. no. And again, no, pag nakikita mo yung guideline, no, even the European Union among the anti-obesity medication, they would actually uh, uh, they would actually uh, give priority or they would advise 
uh, Orlistat over the other anti-diabetic, uh, anti-obesity medications because of their uh, efficacy. No? Kasi again, no, yung mga other nabang, yung mga other anti-obesity medications na nabanggit ko, po kanina, no? they have uh, cardiovascular risk then. Um, another is, um, another approved na available is yung uh, GLP-1, yung mga liraglutide, but other GLP-1 which are naririnig natin, no? which is actually, I think it's a fad. No? These are approved, yung, uh, yung uh, aside from liraglutide, yung mga newer, no? again, no? it's the indication for now is more of the diabetes no but we actually can see um uh, added benefit on weight loss but we do not actually use them for the sole no for the sole treatment of obesity as of now but we have ongoing um researches and i think uh yung effect nila are promising so you know, we have to wait on those um uh, researches for us to increase our uh, confidence on prescribing these newer drugs uh, against obesity. Okay, Dr. Jed. So, yung mga GLP-1 agonists for mga diabetic and obese patients. Oo. Oh, oh. And uh, yung iba kasi yung mga bagong GLP-1, no, yung mga dosing niya is actually more on the, uh, ano pa sa, sa diabetes pa yung dosing natin. Actually, when you look at the studies, no, mas mataas yung dose, uh, mas mataas yung dose niya if you want to achieve no weight loss talaga. But again, no, the indication still for uh, diabetes we are still waiting for uh for the studies which uh, would give us the ano no yung um, uh give us the 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 way of prescribing eventually soon sana okay there are ongoing studies and ano doc diba medyo expensive ang GLP1 tama ba mm, mm, yes kasi nga it's it's uh bago siya no um, technically uh yeah uh, not uh, not all patients really would sustain them, no? Even yung mga middle-income individuals, no? Talagang, uh, uh, ano siya, mahal siya. But hopefully, sana, it, it will decrease in the future. Okay, Doc. Thank you for that. So, another question from the chat box uh, from Ma'am Sue Ann Lim. Um, he said, she says, Salamat, Doc Jed. How about for obese patients without identified metabolic diseases? Is there a role to reduce the weight to achieve one's ideal weight? One's ideal weight, yes. Uh, so these are patients who are walang well, obesity related. Okay. So, uh, uh, so actually, when we look at the guidelines, ma'am, no? so um, we look in, again, as just like I've mentioned kanina, no, meron tayong, ma'am, we have to stratify our patients, whether these patients are at low risk, high risk, or very high risk of acquiring cardiovascular disease, and looking into the BMI then. So doon natin malalaman din kung ano yung nababagay na, na, na treatment plan to this patient. For example, if ang patient naman natin, yung BMI niya, no, less than 27, no, wala pang obesity-related disease, baka po, we can advise this patient lang, no, yung primary na advice natin, yung mga lifestyle intervention. But once the BMI is 27, tas meron na siyang obesity-related health condition, baka we can actually consider pharmacotherapy more. So if the patient's BMI is more than 30, yung BMI niya, then pharmacotherapy on top of uh, lifestyle intervention. Again, if the BMI becomes higher, no, 35 na yung BMI natin, tapos meron ng obesity-related complications, no, diabetic, hypertensive, meron obstructive sleep apnea. And that, in that way, on top of lifestyle intervention, pharmacotherapy, we, we can actually advise uh, metabolic surgery or no, bariatric surgery in this patient. Yes, this will not only help uh, lose weight, but also to address the uh, complications brought about obesity. Okay, Dr. Jed, thanks. So from the Q&A, an anonymous attendee also asked, is the Pingan Pinoy recommended for the general population only or for those with obesity as well? Have there been any changes in the food pyramid recommendations in light of increasing obesity or is it the same po daw, Doc? So in uh, is um yung pinggang pinoy recommended for general population or with uh patients with obesity and there bang changes or recommendations uh, from the food pyramid in light of the increasing obesity 
Yeah. Actually, for the pinggang Pinoy, no, commonly kasi we use it in the clinics no, for as part of the diet um, prescription sa mga patient natin, obese, hyper, uh, obese with uh, comorbid conditions, especially mga diabetic uh, patients. But again, yes, it can also be used in the general population because again, when we look at the real perspective, no, everything in excess would be harmful. no. So we have put everything in moderation. Now, even yung mga patient, like for example, mga diabetic patients or obese, no, they would actually uh, ask that, ano ba yung, yung, yung bawal? Talagang hindi kakainin. But actually, because we have learned more uh, as medicine, no, uh, nagbabago siya, we have learned more about obesity, we have learned more about diabetes. And so actually, we just simply tell our patient, no, you can eat, you can still enjoy your favorite food, but again, it should not be part a significant of your diet. And therefore, again, the message here is portion control in moderation. So, Doc, talaga balanced diet lang. Kailangan balanced diet. And in moderation, no? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks, and again, kanina pala, just to add that, no? it's more on the quality din, no? Kailangan mapanuri tayo sa mga kinakain natin. And therefore, no, mas maganda when we do our grocery, di ba? Tinitignan natin yung natutunal value ng pagkain natin, no? And although sometimes it would be inevitable for us to, again, to to get those unhealthy foods, especially, no, kung busy, parang magkakain ka na lang kung anong available. But again, it should not be always the case. Because again, we, 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 we do not, feel pa yung harmful effect at this time but again eventually if this is accumulated then later on doon pa lang natin maliit so again yes i would agree kat it's again a well balanced diet pa din talaga okay thanks doc jed so um i have a uh questions on intermittent fasting from our viewers ging frex and gloria onshano so i'll I'll just um parang put it together because it's about intermittent fasting. So, a question about intermittent fasting, which I think na sabi niyo rin kanina, Doc, is it effective in losing weight? One and um the ne- the next question is is uh is it safe to recommend low carb diet with intermittent fasting to obese patients with other comorbidities? Okay, yun Doc. So regarding intermittent fasting now. Okay, so again, so for intermittent fasting, just like what I've mentioned uh, kanina, for weight loss alone, no, again, certain studies, no, actually there are, I think, 27 studies on intermittent fasting that would actually give us, no, yung conclusion nila, it, we're losing weight of about uh, approximately 0.8 to 13% of baseline weight with no adverse um uh, serious adverse events. And uh, some of these studies would actually include patients who are diabetic. And actually, it has see, they have seen that it also has improvement on glycemic control. Again, just like what I've mentioned kanina, again, we need long-term studies on this one. No, Yung uh, uh, more studies on intermittent fasting. Combining intermittent fasting and uh, low carbohydrates nga ba yung doktora? Doctor, low, low carbohydrate. Low carb diet, though, doc. If it's yes, again, again, when we prescribe a specific diet to our patient, we have to look again into the characteristic of this patient. Meron na bang uh, compli- uh, meron na bang comorbid condition ng patient? Baka kasi hindi bagay sa patient. Again, for pag speaking of weight loss alone, without obesity related disease, it might have effect on the weight. But again, long term. Uh, long-term effect, long-term benefit, long-term complications, we do not know. So short-term, yes, nakikita naman natin, pumapayat naman talaga yung mga pasyente. No? Meron nga uh, yung mga, which we do not advise, yung mga crash diet, no? parang in uh, in few months time, biglang an more than 10 kilos ang uh, nalulus na weight, but we do not advise this one. No, Again, uh, yung pag-lose ng weight na very drastic, very rapid, also is more more harmful than beneficial. So again, it must be, uh, again, it we should look into all aspects before uh, uh, before uh, taking into this uh, specific diet. 
Okay? Another thing is yung mga low-carb diet. Tapos mag-intermittent fasting. Remember, carbohydrates pa din, no? Yung fuel natin. So, sometimes it's not really advisable to to take, no? Low carbs or sometimes no carb, especially kung meron ng ibang sakit ang patient. So, Doc, short term lang talaga minsan. Short term, o, yung mga effects natin. Yes, makikita naman natin ang ganda, no? Kung mapayat talaga, that's short term. But again, uh, long term effect, we need more studies. So, as the long term effect. Mm-hmm. Baka 10 years from now, makikita na natin kung, kung ano na talaga yung ano yung uh, especially on mortality, cardiovascular outcomes ng mga ketogenic intermittent fasting, baka by that time, meron na tayong clear data on that. Okay, Doc. Thank you. So last, uh, two questions, Doc. Last na lang. So one is from our viewer, Stacy Yen Ting in the Zoom. Which is more accurate, Doc, in uh, determining obesity risk? Ang BMI or yung waist-to-hip ratio? So actually, yung just like what they mentioned kanina, so yung BMI, it's been traditionally used as screening for obesity. But again, we'll look at the BMI kasi it does not take into account yung, ano, yung uh, um, muscle mass ng isang pasyente, yung bone density ng isang pasyente. Okay? Kaya makikita natin minsan, di ba, kahit hindi naman malaki, mataba yung patient, just like yung mabigat siya, nag-gym siya. Pero pag kinumpute mo yung BMI niya, no, bulky lang siya, parang pumupunta siya sa obese. And therefore, some studies, no, actually, yun yung current, no, no, yung mga, uh, some uh, recommendation would actually uh, recommend yung, ano, yung waist-hip ratio kasi this will, it is correlated kasi for, uh, or more correlated siya into cardiovascular outcome rather than the BMI. But, but as a screening kasi, we still use the BMI, but when we look at deeper cardiovascular complications, cardiovascular association, kasi yung central adiposity, yun naman kasi yung nagdudulot ng complications such as insulin resistance, then that would be a better way of uh, of using this one. Sometimes kasi minsan, no, um, minsan kasi hindi pa siya yung talagang uh, hindi siya. Hindi naman sa hindi uso, pero nasanay kasi tayo sa BMI. No? But there are studies actually no comparing this one, BMI, uh, with hip, hip, hip ratio, measuring the uh, waist circumference and hip circumference. So actually, mas mag- maganda rin. No? Maganda na. No? Aside from getting the BMI, we have to check the waist, uh, waist hip ratio of patient to identify the risk of cardiovascular complications. For, for those with mo- more comorbidity, siguro, Doc, yun yung mas maganda yung weight ratio rin. Especially yung may cardiovascular comorbidity. Yes. Yeah, so. so, Doc, last question. So, um, di ba, you have stated um, shortly about yung mga surgeries in terms of for the obese patients. You've talked already about yung drugs. Now, about how about yung surgeries, Doc? Ano, when do we in, when do we tell the patient, ay, you have to go undergo surgeries? And what are the available surgeries here in the Philippines for obese? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the for the guidelines, pa din, we advise patients with uh, bariatric or metabolic surgery. No, if your BMI is forty and above, yes, you are a candidate for surgery. But you can you can be a candidate for surgery if your BMI is already thirty five, provided that you have already obesity related complications. Or despite yung mga pharmacotherapy, it has failed. Then yes, we are. Uh, you are a candidate for um, bariatric surgery. Of course, no, the alam naman natin, especially in the Philippines, the problem would always be the cost, accessibility, because not all centers would actually offer no a bariatric surgery. But we have centers, no, na na gumagawa na ng bariatric surgery. And I think, no, uh, when you do your uh, a surgery, no, so you lose as much as 20 to 30 percent from your baseline. But 20 to 30 to 35 percent, uh, from your baseline, uh, baseline, uh, weight, no. Usually, uh, in general, no. Usually, ang uh, what I see, no, yung mga ginagawa natin, we do yung mga uh, gastric banding, mga laparoscopic gastric banding. But actually, among the surgeries or the the procedures 
on bariatric surgery, actually, I think this is the this has the lowest weight loss. No, para twenty percent. Yung iba kasi no, yung uh, more complicated yung mga bilio bilio pancreatic diversion with duodenal switch. Usually, yun yung may pinakamalaking weight loss as high as thirty five percent from the baseline. Okay. So 20 to 35 percent, pwedeng malus in terms of if you undergo surgery. Doc, may pahabol last na to from isang patient, uh, isang viewer, sorry, patient talaga. So we have um from Sir Neil. Um, good morning, Doc Gerald. I just want to know if the BMI chart is really relate reliable or applicable for small built Asian spot. I personally find it very hard to achieve the ideal body weight. In my case, the ideal or the recommended range is 18 to 23, but I already feel dry and weak at 65 kilos. So I decided to stay at 70 kilos po. Is that okay, Siguro? It's his question na he's a little bit more over his BMI. Yeah, actually, yung, ano, yung BMI na sisunod, if, if it is accurate for Asian, so actually what I have shown kanina is uh, is yung uh, Asia-Pacific, no, Asia-Pacific classification for BMI. Again, kasi nga, di ba, mas compare so, to Caucasian Westerners, no, your, your belt in, no, our belt, no, mas maliit. Kaya we have actually a task force that would recommend yung uh, modified, kumbaga, modified BMI. And yes, I would agree na, na for Asians, it's 18.5 to 22.9 as compared to the, the usual WHO classification na 18.5 to 24.9 BMI. Again, no, uh, sabi ng viewer kanina, parang uh, dry na siya when he is trying to achieve the BMI. Again, when we look into again yung yung uh, studies on BMI it does not take into consideration other factors like yung mga uh, muscle mass natin yung density yung bone density natin kasi sometimes when we lose weight kasi not oh, hindi lang naman fats ang nawawala it's also ma- nawawal nawawalan din tayo ng muscle mass when we lose weight but again so siguro in this specific patient aside from looking into the BMI only no baka kailangan din ng uh, to measure other anthropometric no yung para gaya ng sinabi natin yung mga WHR or other imaging no to look into the fat mass lean body mass of this patient para makita natin not only on the BMI alone kasi nga uh, based on the studies may mga loopholes din yung BMI natin if we just look into that only as assessing especially kung especially kung ano may mga nararamdaman natin pinipilit pa nating pag-attain yung BMI. Siguro we look into other parameters that we look into. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Neil. But he says, Doc, thank you daw so much for entertaining his question. So, Doc Gerald, uh, what is your take-home message and baka you would like to invite everyone for your activities in yung World Obesity Day? Sige, Doc. Okay. So, I'll just, uh, ano, I'll just share my, ano, my slide, Doc Pat. Okay, so again, so actually the, the take-home uh, message for this one is again, no, just like at the start of the discussion, no, again, changing perspective, we have to uh, we have to change our perspective on obesity. No, we have to refrain against uh, weight discrimination and stigma. We have to end. Oh, we, we have to end this one. This must change. And uh, from that, no, we have to understand further why people acquire this chronic disease as obesity. Uh, saan ba nang do? Are there metabolic problems? Are there genetic problems in this individual? Are there issues on accessing healthcare? Are there issues on sleep? So we have to 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 understand understand this. And by understanding this, now we will be more um we will uh we can look bigger at the clearer picture, no? 
eventually by ending yung stigma na sinasabi natin. And, sp- and aside from that, the complications of obesity, we have also have to address this one. And lastly, no, I would just like to uh, invite everyone for the upcoming events of the Philippine College of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism. And also, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the members of the um, nutrition, no? Nutrition and Obesity Council. I think they are here in the audience, no? Dr. Uh, uh, Suan Lim, who is uh, currently the, the, the chair of the Obesity Council uh, of PCEDM. And uh, I would like also to acknowledge Cheska Villong, who, who have actually uh, helped me with the uh, the slides and lecture on uh, this uh, forum. No, um, uh, we will be having our uh, nutrition work workshop. Uh, it's a pre-convention workshop uh, next month. No, so um, this is the at the EDSA Shangri La no? on March 15, twenty twenty three. So that would be a Wednesday. And aside from that, uh, we will be having a TikTok challenge. No, that would. Be uh, be on the World Obesity Day on March 4, no? So this is open to uh, uh, ECP members or even uh, doctors, no? Uh, and even patients, no? Uh, we will be posting the, we will be posting the, uh, on how to join, okay? And the mechanics of the event for this uh, one. We'll just finalizing uh, we're just finalizing uh, the mechanics for the obesity day teacher challenge. But again, no, what the 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 the, the thing that we will want to see uh, in this TikTok challenge is just a short video on the obesity um, uh, journey of a specific patient. No, what are the things that they have learned, and what are the aspects that they have to they have seen or changes that they have seen in their struggles being. Uh, sometime obese in their uh, uh, being obese, no? So, um, so we will be posting on our, ano po, no? uh, on our website, the mechanics of this uh, event. And uh, I think we will also be uh, giving the mechanics to, to, uh, 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 to uh, all training institutions for, uh, for us to join this uh, World Obesity Day uh, celebration. I hope uh, uh, everyone would be supportive as we celebrate this uh, event next month. Uh, that's all, Kat. Uh, Dr. Kat, thank you. Hi, Dr. Jed. Sorry na wala ko bigla. May nagka-technical difficulty. But I'm here na, Dr. So, Dr. Jed. Dr. Gerald Bermudez, thank you so much. In behalf of the PCP and the viewers of this PCP Live, we would like to thank you for your time, effort, and expertise regarding um, uh, talking about and its changing perspectives. So before we end this health forum, Doc, um, we would like to um, welcome our, our last but certainly last, uh, not least speaker to give us a closing message for this health forum. Let us all welcome one of our board regents of the Philippine College of Physicians, Dr. Juan, Juan Maria Ibarra. Oh. Dr. On behalf of the Board of Regents of the Philippine College of Physicians, Maraming maraming salamat, Dr. Gerald Bermudez, isang napakahusay at magaling na internal medicine specialist at endocrinologist. Nakakatakot na po yung tuloy-tuloy na pagtaas ng bilang ng mga overweight at obese sa bansa natin. Susunod na po dyan ang pagdami ng mga nagkaka-alta presyon, diabetes, stroke, heart attacks at iba pang mga komplikasyon ng obesity. Ang obesity ay tinaguri ang sakit o disease na ayon sa World Health Organization. Para maiwasan ang komplikasyon ng pagiging overweight at obese, kailangan alagaan natin ang ating katawan, kumain ng tama at maging physically active. Maraming salamat, Dr. Kat Tohino, sa pag-moderate ng talakayan ngayong umaga. Congratulations din at maraming salamat sa PCP Committee on Media Communications sa tuloy-tuloy na paghatid sa atin ng health education and information sa pamamagitan ng weekly health forums online. Salamat sa lahat ng nanood ngayong umaga. Magkita-kita po ulit tayo sa susunod na linggo. Good morning! JM ko for closing remarks message. So, um, ano ba ang natutunan natin about obesity? So, 
As we stated that obesity is a significant health burden that has led to very many um, common health problems such as yung mga cardiovascular conditions such as stroke, hypertension, diabetes, arthritis, digestive problems, and even cancer. So despite being a significant health burden, obesity is still preventable. And this could be prevented by limiting our intake of uh, fats and sugars and engaging more in regular physical activity. We also need um, supportive environments, proper health programs, and health promotion activities that could help us prevent this condition. So a change in perspective as well as sustained collaborative efforts between communities, the government, and industries could prevent could prove success in us defeating obesity. And also, let us remember that uh, we fight obesity not just by uh, doing diet and exercise, but we need to educate, advocate, and attack the roots. As Dr. Jed Bermuda said, we, when we say roots, we recognize R for recognize the obesity, O for obesity monitoring, O for obesity prevention, T for treatment of obesity, and S for systems-based approach. So again, for um, thank you all for attending this week's PCP Health Forum. For announced, thank you for Dr. Jed Bermudez, Dr. Nicodemus, and Dr. J.M. Koff for giving us your expertise and time for this health forum. And for our announcements, can we post our announcements? Okay, so... For our upcoming activities for February, we have first the we are proud to say that we will have our second inter, internal medicine boot camp on February 24 to 25 at the Philippine Inter, International Convention Center or PICC for residents. This uh this will be held again at Feb 24 and 25, the second internal medicine boot camp. Um, I would like to also invite you all to the UHC Summit, the Universal Healthcare Summit on March 25, 2023. It will be live via Zoom. And um, it, it is entitled also um, Universal Health Care Summit, Understanding Strategies, Aligning Perspectives. This will be live via Zoom. And of course, I would like to all, I would like to invite all to our 53rd Annual Congress of the PCP entitled Passion, Constancy of Purpose, Prudence in Internal Medicine. This will be held in the Philippine International Convention Center from May 7 to 10. I hope everyone has learned about obesity and its changing perspectives. And I would like everyone, I would like to thank everyone for joining us for today's health forum and hope you can join us again in our upcoming events. Thank you and always keep safe. Ingat. The Philippine College of Physicians through the Committee on Media Communication and Health Forum wishes to thank its media partners, social media followers, and participants. See you again next time here on the PCP Health Forum. With the Philippine College of Physicians well on the road to 70, the pre-convention series continues to pave the way for its 53rd Annual Congress. Following the Nutrition Summit on January 31, 2023, up next is the second Internal Medicine Bootcamp. Must Know Hacks, High Yield Advice on Clinical Knowledge and Skills. This two-day bootcamp is slated on February 24 and 25 at the Philippine International Convention Center. Day one is a plenary session to be mounted in a hybrid format and welcomes all residents. Whether you're at the venue or on the virtual platform, you will have the opportunity to learn from the experts on relevant topics. 
in rheumatology, dermatology, pulmonology, hematology, infectious disease, and hepatology. Day 2 brings you parallel sessions to be held on-site at the PICC and is open to senior residents only. Both Tracks A and B offer various workshops. Travel the road to 70 with the Philippine College of Physicians. Join the second internal medicine boot camp. Must know hacks, high yield advice on clinical knowledge and skills. Know the tips and pearls and mark your calendars on February 24 and 25, 2023. The Philippine College of Physicians is unstoppable, implying the road to 70, taking you closer to its 53rd annual 